Robotic natural orifice sigmoidectomy for Hinchy 4 perforated sigmoidaventiculitis. This is a 64 year old female presenting with nausea, vomiting, and diffuse abdominal pain that has gotten worse over the last 48 hours prior to her ED visit. Her vital signs were normal in the ED initially and her labs showed elevated lactic acid, dehydration, and normal Y count. Her CAT scan demonstrated free air, free fluid, perforated sigmoidaventiculitis, and a fair amount of fibrin material within the pelvis. We decided to proceed with a robotic approach. Place a total of four ports in a straight line, as demonstrated in this figure. Upon exploring the abdominal cavity, we noted to have a fair amount of ficulent and fluid material related to a perforated sigmoid diverticulitis. Utilizing a total robotic approach, we retracted the colon, followed by using the vessel sealer to divide the mesentery in a proximity to the colon and marching towards the rectus sigmoid junction. We can see the area of perforation. Here we decided to divide distally and proximally for the natural orifice specimen extraction, also known as the NICE procedure. This is the uterus being retracted for better exposure, followed by using the dilators and ring forceps to get this specimen extracted from a natural orifice approach. And we removed all the other sponges as well. This was followed by introducing the anvil via the ring forceps. The rectus sigma junction was prepared as well using a 45 robotic stapler. We used ICG to assess for the blood supply. Then we took down the lateral attachment to have a tension-free anastomosis using a combination of suction, irrigation to get the fluid followed by introducing the anvil into the descending colon and prepared the area for the anastomosis. And here we had the end of loop for the EEA. See the spike coming through. And then here we ensured we have proper alignment. For the circular stapler EA 29. We submerged the anastomosis with water and as well introduced ICG to assess the blood supply. As we insufflated within the rectum. It's important to note that there are other ways to perform this anastomosis as demonstrated in the literature where you can actually use two endoloops distal and proximal and as well 
you can utilize a vacuole suture as a two layers or two steps technique to have less tissue. So as you perform the anastomosis, you don't run into the problem of misfire or difficulty engaging the stapler. And one of the downsides of performing a linear stapler and EEA is creating an area where it could be a devascularization of that particular um, area, which would be a concern down the line for a leak. Here, we used uh, the ICG. Then followed by introducing the 10 French JPs. Operative uh, time was just above uh, two hours on the console and the blood loss was minimal. And that's the photo prior discharge within two weeks from the hospital. And that's her in her recovery.